Okay, unit five review. Solve the portions for one, two, and three. If we do that, we're going to cross multiply. Now remember, when we're doing numbers two, number two, I want to make sure you put parentheses around any binomials and make sure when you cross multiply, you distribute to each item. So here we're going to get 8y equals 3 times 24, which is 72. And then when we divide by 8, we find out that y is 9. So here, remember, when you're multiplying, distribute to both terms. You have 10x plus 220 equals 30x plus 60. At this point, I'm going to move my x's to the right. I'm going to subtract 10x, leaving with 20x's. I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides and get 160. And then now when I divide by 20 on both sides, I get x equals 8. Don't let the decimal scare you. We have 3y equal to 18.2 times times. Put that in the calculator. I'll do it right now. 163.8. Then we divide both sides by 3. You end up with 54.6. I'm going too fast. Just hit pause. I'm trying to make this video as short as possible. So solve pairs of congruent angles and write proportions that relate to corresponding sides. So it tells us here that these two are similar. So let's cheat and put our letters right underneath. And now we can see what lines up. So angle P is congruent to angle T right underneath it. Angle Q is congruent congruent to angle U. Angle R is congruent to angle W. And angle S is congruent to angle B. That's all the angles. Now all the sides. Well, once again, for example, PQ and TU. So segment PQ is congruent to segment TU. Then if we go to QR, that's going to be congruent to UW. Then if you look at RS, right underneath it is WB. And then if we do the P and S, well that's going to be T and B. That's how we line it up to show all of the shapes that work out. Now, proportion, we can say, I'm going to write all these as if on top of my fraction. So PQ, that's an R. Can't fix it that way. So line segment PQ corresponds to TU. And all I'm doing is taking what I have over here and setting up as fractions. So QR corresponds to UW. And that's equal to RS over WB. And PS over TV. So those are all the proportions of the sides. And I got that from just taking all of these numerators and then making all these the denominators. That's simple. Okay, number five. Uh, find out if they're similar. Well, once again, they're not lined up the same way. So I'm going to take this one and rotate it so it's lined up the same way. I'm going to put the one mark here and the two marks here. Now, the 8 would go here, the x would go here, and the 10 would go here. We spun it around. So now that tells us that a should correspond to 12, x corresponds to 9, and 10 would be right there. Okay? So, we don't need to do anything with a 10, but we are going to use 8 and 12 as our magic ratio. So if I have my small one over my big one, and 8 over 12 is equal to small is x and the big is 9. Now let's do what I did in the first few problems. 12x equals 72. Divide by that 12, and that's where we 
we get x equal to 6. So if it helps redraw it, go ahead and do that. And this one, as you can tell, is already lined up. We have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. So everything's already lined up. The 2.5 doesn't really correspond to anything, so it doesn't really help us. But the 5 and the 10 do. And then the x and the 4.5. Now, if you see the shortcut, and you recognize that the small one is half the big one, then all you have to do is divide this by 2, and you'll have x. But if you don't see the shortcut, and there won't always be one, let's see how to set it up. So let's say big on top of the time and small on the bottom. So I have my big, let's do the side here and the bottom here. So the big side is 4.5, and the small side is R no. The big on the right base, 10, and the small base, 5. Cross multiply, 10x equals 5 times 4.5. Take your calculator, 5 times 4.5, 22.5. Then divide by 10, and you'll get x equals 2.25. Which we go back to talking about that shortcut, half of $4.50 is $2.25, so it works out. Six, determinants are similar. Okay, well once again, it's not exactly lined up, so we have, I'm gonna spin this one so it matches. I'm gonna put my one mark here, my two mark here. So A is, has the one mark, B has the two mark, and C would go here. So all I was doing was rotating it this way to line up the same way. Now 16 is between A and B, 12 is between A and C, and 14 goes here. So what I need to determine is, the 12 correspond to 18, the same way 14 does to 21, and 16 does to 24. So let's set up my proportions. 12 over 18 has to equal 14 over 21, and 16 over 24. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can cross multiply all of these and find out if they work, or you can just convert them all into decimals. So 12 divided by 18 is 0.6 repeating. 14 divided by 21, I'm just typing these in the calculator, guess what? 0.6 repeating. So if 16 divided by 24 is also 0.6 repeating, which it is, you now know that they are similar. So now you can write a statement. So I'm going to go ABC. Triangle ABC is similar to UVT by SSS similarity. That doesn't ask for the um, ratio here, the scale factor, but basically take any one of those fractions and reduce it. So scale factor is 12 over 18, let's reduce that by 6. 6 goes into 12 twice, and 18 three times, which if you think about it, that's 0.6 repeating. Okay, number 7. <clears throat> Identify the similar triangles, then find each measure. So, We have two triangles. This is 30, this is 32, and we don't know this. That's right here. But on the bigger triangle, be careful. This is where a lot of people mess up. This is 40. Okay? And we still haven't found x. So let's do that first. That'll be easier. So we can set up our fractions right here. 30 over 32 equals 10 over x. Okay, because we want to have this number so we can find this number. So we're going to cross multiply and get 30x equals 320. Then we have to divide 320 by 30, which is 
Six repeating. Which means X right here is 10 and 2 thirds. So that means this number here is 32 plus 10, 42 and 2 thirds. And we know this is 22 right here. So now we can use this information to find out um, x. Now, instead of using the nasty third, 42 and 2 thirds, I'm just going to use 30 and 40 and x is 22. So 30 corresponds to 40 the same way x corresponds to 22. I cross multiply, I get 40x equals 22 times 30, 660. Divide that by 40, and you get 16.5. Okay. So there are actually two x's there. Well, you didn't really have, I went actually, we didn't actually have to find this one, but extra practice, good for us. Okay, here we go. Part B. Let's do a statement, identify a similar triangle, then find each measure. Okay. So, part B. <clears throat> This one we can hopefully see the shortcut. 10 to 20. Okay, so the big one is twice as big. So this is going to be clearly 26. Now again, if you didn't see it, you could say 10 corresponds to 20. The same way 13 corresponds to x. Which gives us 10x equals 260 divided by 10, and we get 26. Okay, A, determine whether they are uh, similar, and if so, write the similarity statement. Well, A and D correspond, and B and E correspond. We only need two angles. So, triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle D, E, F, by A, A similarity. Okay, B. So B, we have a smaller triangle, and a bigger triangle. We have parallel lines, okay? And so with the parallel lines, so let's think back, when we have parallel lines, okay? We have corresponding angles, okay? Well, if you look at this as a triangle, like so, we have corresponding angles, like so. So what we can do here is we can say that this angle corresponds to this one, and this one corresponds to that one. So again, we do have AA. So now we just have to make our statement. So the big one is R, we have a T here and a U. And here we have S, a T, and an L. So if we went T, S, L, like those on your paper, triangle T, S, L is similar to triangle T, R, U. But remember, you could go in any order. You could do R, U, T, and S, L, T. It wouldn't matter as long as you go in the same order. And that's by angle, angle, similar. Now, C, let's go back up a little bit. We do have this, I'm going to rotate this one this way. Put the 90 degree angle down here, okay, which was W. And I would make this 18, and I would make this 20, 
four, y is here, x is here. So wy is 18, yep, and wx is 24, that works out. So basically, 20 has to correspond to 18 the same way 36 does to 24. So let's test it out. 20 and 18 equal 36, 24. Now we have to cross multiply and see what we get. So 18 times 36 is 648. And 20 times 24, it's not going to end in an 8, and a 0 is 480. So these two are not equal. That means they are not proportionate. And so they're not similar. Moving on to part D. We have an angle here, 65. We have an angle here, 65. We do have two sides, so we have the potential for SAS, but the sides have to be proportional. Well, without doing any fractions, you can see that it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So therefore, we have SAS, so on sheet, we did KDJ, let's go with that. KDJ, again, you can go in any order you want, it's got to be consistent, is similar to RPZ. Triangle RPZ by SAS similarity. And number nine. RU is eight. US is 14. TV is X minus one. And VS is 17.5. Again, the beauty is you have your fraction set up. There's one, there's the other one. You just have to write it and cross multiply. 14 over 8 equals 17.5 over x minus 1. It's not the only way to do it, but it is one way. So we're going to do 8 times, oh, 14x, don't forget to distribute, minus 14 is equal to 8 times 17.5, which is 140. I'm going to add 14 to both sides. I get 14x equals 154. And when I divide by 14, I should get 11. There you go. So x is 11, but it also says find TV. Remember, make sure you pay attention to directions. It's asking for two things here. So TV is x minus 1, which would make that 10. Okay, we're almost done. Then number 10. In a triangle, the ratio of the measure of the sides is 3, 3, 8. That's the same one that was on your review packet, so it shouldn't be much of a surprise. 3, 3, 8. The perimeter of this ratio shape would be 14. So, well, we can have two proportions. The leg of our imaginary triangle and the perimeter, so leg and perimeter, the leg of our real triangle and the perimeter of our real triangle. Now, once I solve this, I could just subtract and find the base, or I could do it again, base and perimeter. So the base of my pretend triangle, the perimeter, the base of my real one, and the perimeter. And now when I cross multiply and divide, I will get the dimensions each time. So that's 14x equals 392 times 3, 1176. Divide by 14, I get 84. So each leg is 84. Over here, 14x equals 392 times 8, which is 3136. So then when I divide by 14, I get 224. So my real triangle, would look like this, 84, 84, 2, 24. Okay, find x and y. Again, we already have our fractions right there. 2x plus 1 over 5 
equals 4x minus 1 over 7. Again, not the only way to do it. You could do it this way. 2x plus 1 over 4x minus 1 equals 5 over 7. You have that option. Don't forget your parentheses, so you distribute. 7 times 2x is 14x. 7 times 1 is 7. 5 times 4x is 20x, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to subtract 14x to give me 6x here. I'm going to add 5 to give me 12, which leads me to my answer of x equals 2. Now, B, don't jump in and say this over this equals this over this. It's not that type of problem. Notice the hash marks. They are equal. And since the lines are parallel, these are equal to each other also. So I'm just going to set up two equations. 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 1. And 3y is equal to 2y plus 2. Let's solve them both. On this first one, we'll subtract 2x from both sides to get x equal x. We're we'll going to add 1 to both sides to get 5. I'm done. On this one, quite simply, I just need to subtract 2y, which gives me y is 2. And I'm finished. Okay. Um, grab the numbers here. Yeah, okay, so here's 12. There's some mistakes on this uh, one that don't match up with yours. So, number 12, determine whether it's dilation from A to B is enlarged or reduction. Then find, find the scale factor. Okay, well, from A to B, it got bigger, so it is an enlarged function. And I think on yours, you didn't have to find the scale factor. Yeah, you just had to say whether it was, you didn't have to do this part. And then on B, from A to B, what happened to it? It got smaller, so that's a reduction. Okay, these two down here were not on your packet, so don't worry about it. That was not on your packet. And six, on this one, which for you guys is... Thirteen. Okay. There's some extra information, don't worry about it. So, let's plot this. Uh, negative two, negative two. That's D. One, two. That's E. And 1, negative 2, that's F. It says do a scale factor of 2. Well, that means you're going to multiply each of these numbers by 2. So this is going to, D prime is going to become negative 4, negative 4. E prime is going to become 2, 4. And F prime is going to become 2, negative 4. So let's plot that. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my D prime. And then 2, 4. There's E prime. And there's my F prime. And there's my enlarged triangle. Okay, this is your, on yours, 14 and 15. Last two, we're almost there. Okay, find AB. Okay, so here we have 7, here we have 5, which means the total is 12. So we're trying to find this portion here. So, we don't really need to worry about this right here. But this 7 is related to 12 the same way the unknown piece is related to 36. Way corresponds. So if I do 12x equals 7 times 36, it's 252. And then divide by 12, x is 21. So this is 21. And then I could figure out if I needed to just be 15. If you look at that now, you think about it. Times three, times three makes total seven. That is all proportional.
And last but not least, find VE. So we have two triangles. We have 21 and we have our unknown, VE. Then we have our bigger triangle. The total on the left side is 21 plus 14, which is 35. And we have 9. So again, we can set it up in any way we want. We do 21 over x equals 35 over 9. We could also do 21 over 35 equals x over 9. Notice what's still being multiplied is the same thing. Either way, we get 35x equals 9 times 21, which is 189. We divide 189 by 35, x is 5.4. So VE is 5.4. And that is it for unit 5.